The Sanford chip is a screening test, so it's actually designed to be used for people who are currently in good health. The idea behind the chip is to identify problems before they come up. See if there's anything in your genes that give us any clues for anything we can do right now that can help you be healthier in the future. One of the common questions we get is how is this testing done? I know the name chip kind of makes people think of like the microchip you use to keep track of your pets if they get lost, but it's not a chip that's implanted, it's not something you wear, it's not something you swallow. This is a blood test, it's done on a sample of blood from you. It's called the chip because that's the testing technology that we use. As far as pharmacogenetics, when your provider looks at those results and they're thinking, okay, you have a health condition and we want to start you on a medication to treat that, they can look at those results and say, all right, maybe we should start with this medication. What it also does, built into our electronic medical record system, we have what we call decision support. If they put in a medication that you might have a bad reaction to, it will bring up an alert and say, this person might not react very well to this medication or this medication at that dose. You might want to try a lower dose or a higher dose or try a different medication altogether. Some of its lifestyle changes, so the benefits for the medically actionable predisposition is the fact that, as the name implies, there's something medical that we can do to modify that risk. Some of that might be lifestyle changes. Say you're at risk for colon cancer. We know that certain dietary changes can reduce your risk for colon cancer, or most cancers, adding some regular exercise to your daily routine can reduce your risk for those cancers. Sometimes it's a risk that isn't gonna be modifiable with lifestyle changes, so we talk about things like medications or additional screening. If you're at a higher risk for breast cancer, we might recommend more frequent mammograms. If you have a genetic predisposition to have high cholesterol, no matter what you eat or how often you exercise, we might say, all right, let's start you on a medication rather than making you try diet and exercise for a year before starting with the medication. So that's a question that we get a lot. If I have a change in this gene, is this my destiny? If I don't have a change in this gene, does that mean I'll never get breast cancer or heart disease or something like that? Um, not necessarily. The risk for cancer, for any specific cancer, will vary a lot depending on the gene. The risk for that particular type of heart condition will vary a lot based on the gene. And that's something that not only will your results help you with, but your genetic counselor and your care team can help you. Okay, is this a 40% risk for colon cancer? Is this an 85% risk for colon cancer? On the flip side, if we don't find that you're at high risk for colon cancer based on a gene, that doesn't mean that you can't get colon cancer. Everyone has about a 5% chance to get colon cancer. We all have a certain chance to get any cancer or any heart condition. So if we don't find something that puts you at a higher risk, that doesn't mean you have no risk. It just means you're not at that higher risk. For people who are found to carry a genetic change that puts them at a higher risk for any of the conditions that we test for, there's a chance that their relatives could have also inherited that genetic change. So we, when we do the genetic counseling visit, we go through the family members, we go through the family history, and we identify people who might be at a higher risk to have that particular genetic change. And we talk you through, here's how they can get testing. If they're local here, they can always come see us. If they live further away, if they live in California, our genetic counselors can help you find somebody in California that your family member can connect with. Anyone who gets um, a positive result will meet with a genetic counselor and we'll talk you through, here's what this means, if there's anybody else in your family that might wanna consider testing, here are what some of the next steps are. Is that seeing an oncologist and getting started with screening for certain types of cancer? Is that meeting with a cardiologist? What are the next steps? We do have patients who get an uninformative result, but they still have concerns about something in their family history, and they can meet with a genetic counselor as well.